Let's talk about six, I can guarantee you've never heard of six, science-backed tips for growing peppers. It'll make your bell peppers bigger. It'll make your jalapenos hotter. But there is no guarantee that the sass level will come down because that's peppers. They're just sassy, sassy plants. Yay crew. We're filming this from inside despite the fact that it is sunny and beautiful outdoors because I'm sick of wind. It is so freaking windy where I am right now. And I've been living in wind because farming is starting. And as you all know, as someone with a bachelor's of science in soil science, I spent a lot of time outside. And you know what? I'm done with summer already because I'm a redhead. While I like my jalapenos hot, my skin being hot is usually painful. So yeah. Tip number one is you need to stop sinking your peppers to the hilt. When we think of tomatoes, we usually think of peppers. And when we think of peppers, we usually think of tomatoes. And because of that, we tend to use very similar tips and tricks to both. Now, if you watch my video on tomato plants in five science-based hacks on those guys, guys. You know I talked about planting depth and just their different root structures. Check out that video if you want to learn more on that. But did you know peppers don't have adventitious roots like tomatoes? Yeah, that's right folks. They do not have the same plant morphology at all when compared to a tomato. That means is that if you sink this plant, you actually may end up with stem rot and more issues than benefits. Now don't get me wrong, peppers do have something called undifferentiated stem cell tissue and that in particular is located in the center of the plant stalk and these cells are present in a number of different plants, but that is only going to happen in the event that the plant is put under stress and forced to make those roots. And the other key there is that it cannot be woody in nature. So if you've ever grown a pepper plant, you know that they're very, they're bush-like, they're tree-like, and they have a woody stem. So if that woody stem is developed and you go to sink your pepper down, it definitely is absolutely not going to send out roots. The tactical tip here is that if you have have a leggy pepper plant that you need to sink for purposes of making sure that the stem is properly supported. You can sink them a couple inches if you like, and that can act as a support. But keep in mind, if you've already developed a woody stem, it's not going to develop roots, and you actually want to do this sooner rather than later. Tip two is that peppers are actually really clicky. Yeah, that's right. Studies have shown that peppers do best when planted with other peppers, and more specifically, specifically other peppers of the identical kind. A Frontiers microbiology study found that pepper plants grown near genetically similar plants fostered a better rhizosphere microbial community. Why this matters is because an enhanced microbial zone means better nutrient cycling and healthier roots. Your peppers literally grow better when they are grown with their cousins. So when it comes to the tactical tip on actually planting these guys, you want to plant bell peppers with bell peppers, jalapenos with jalapenos, jalapenos and more specifically you want to cluster them. The reason being is that the roots when they are intertwined with each other develop an ecosystem below ground that is basically geared or engineered towards pepper plants. I actually find that one really interesting because that means that monocropping in this case is actually hugely beneficial. Tip number three is that even sweet peppers can go spicy biochemically speaking. So just like humans, peppers can also have a glow up that makes them a little bit hotter over time. And this goes for both sweet peppers and already hot peppers like jalapenos or Carolina Reapers, for example. What makes peppers spicy is capsaicin. We know this. And the capsaicin is triggered by a pathway. And this pathway is present for both hot peppers and for sweet peppers. But in sweet peppers, it's just kind of laying dormant in the background. However, things like drought or heat stress on both bell peppers and spicier peppers opens up that pathway and makes it more intense. I don't know if you've ever had this before, I personally have, where you have a jalapeno plant and it's particularly spicy. If you go to eat it once it's turned red or once you've forgotten about it too long and kind of all the leaves are starting to droop, you pull those peppers off and it is like painful levels of spicy jalapeno. That is because the capsaicin pathway was 
triggered even further via that plant stress. And the reason for that trigger is because it just makes a more resilient plant. It's, it's, it's the plant's way of surviving essentially through very stressful times. And we know this because there's a study published in BMC Genomic and it showed that capsaicin biosynthesis genes when enhanced made for a more drought resistant plant. And this drought resistance that was opened via the capsaicin pathway also helped bell peppers become more resilient to drought as well. The tactical tip, if you want to glow up your peppers and make them a little bit hotter is you just gotta put them through some stress. I mean, I personally have had a little bit of a glow up because I've had an incredibly stressful life. So peppers, they follow the same rules as me. The way to trigger this stress obviously is to limit water, put them in a hotter environment, or just simply expose them to more airflow to help increase evapotranspiration, which in turn will trigger those pathways as well. Next tip, we actually discuss this in the world of tomatoes and that is nutrients. Now for tomatoes, we discussed very specific nutrients at very specific times in the growth cycle. But for peppers in particular, potassium is going to be the answer. Now the reason why potassium is so important is because it increases vitamin C inside of the fruits and it also increases the firmness of your pepper. And we all love firm. Let's let's just be honest. There was a meta-analysis done in Horticultura. I would assume it's Spanish and I don't speak this Spanish so I apologize. Anyways, it showed potassium fertilization dramatically improved the pepper fruit quality. The tactical tip when it comes to potassium and peppers is that when you begin to see the budding on your plant, you want to begin to apply more potassium and lower nitrogen compounds. So some Think something like a 5, 10, 15, for example, fertilizer. And one way to do this without having to remember to do it via a liquid fertilizer, which you guys know is one of my favorite forms of fertilizer because it is a, a bioavailable nutrient solution that I prefer. But one way to do that without, without having to forget is actually utilizing wood ash now. Don't use too much because wood ash you can overdo very quickly, but wood ash is a known slow release least natural, just as, as effective as a synthetic, more effective than most organics, to be totally honest, provider of that potassium. Peppers are essentially the equivalent to that beautiful ex-girlfriend that was a little bit cuckoo maju. Not only are they hot, they also are incredibly dramatic and they do hold grudges. And one way they will hold a grudge indefinitely is cooler temps. And they are even worse than the tomato temps. They they need a minimum, both daytime and nighttime temp, of 12 degrees Celsius or 54 degrees Fahrenheit at all times. If it dips below that, you will have permanent, let me repeat, permanent stunting and growth. And this is even more specific to just the seedling stage. This isn't specific to the plants that you choose to then overwinter, ascend into a dormancy. The full grown plants aren't affected by this, but the seedlings most definitely are. And that's one of the reasons why my tomatoes will make it into the greenhouse, my flowers will make it into the greenhouse, but my peppers, I do try to keep indoors until it is time to put them outside, usually again in that mid-June range. This was actually backed up by a study published in Agronomy, and it confirmed that low nighttime temps actually reduced cell division, limited internode length, and cut yield potential. Ideal world, based on what this study confirms, is that you should be trying to keep peppers at above 16 degrees Celsius or 61 degrees Fahrenheit at night via heat mats or heaters. Otherwise, they will be divas. The next tip is actually trimming or topping. So topping is something that is very popular and a lot of people do do it. Now I personally don't top, but I did do a video on topping and I did that video based on a study that did various different types of topping and different quantities of topping. And essentially from that study, what we learned is that one topping is all you need and should be all you do. So this actually very specifically was only done at the six to eight 
true leaf stage. So these guys are not even ready for that topping to take place. They're only about halfway there. And what that study showed is that it increased airflow, which reduced disease, but it also allowed or encouraged faster fruiting and flowering, which is beneficial to those of us in a cooler climate. If you do it too soon though, you will stunt that plant and you will have the absolute opposite effect. And if you do it too late, your flowering will be quicker, but it will be delayed because you're removing the apical where the auxin is and a whole bunch of hormones. So we want to be very strategic as to when we do this. But like I said, I personally don't trim my peppers and I do not top them. But if you wanted to, you could. And I would encourage it if you are planting your peppers in ground and you are in a colder climate. I'm putting mine in containers. I always have. That's where they perform best for me. But if you want to put them in ground and not in containers, that topping process actually may work in your favor by triggering the stress response that then triggers the budding and the flowering. So here's the deal. Peppers are oddly picky, overly sensitive, but somehow like to be in groups. They're social at the same time. And so long as you don't bury them, they won't hold a grudge against you. They will glow up into very beautiful pepper plants in the event that you give them warmth, potassium, and friends. <laughs> that being thank you crew, smash that like button. Be sure to hit the subscribe. Sharing is caring as always. And I need you to give me your most bizarre pepper growing tip. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.